somebody's life was taken because somebody was under the influence. That's I mean, to me, that's tough. You're gonna see a different Fletcher Cox from this point forward. He's you know not what? gonna be. He's not gonna be mad about it. He's gonna be okay. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna play pissed off now, and 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 give you what you come to see. So when it when his you know talents is available in the free agent market or in the trade market, he's gonna demand a lot more than what uh he he uh, demanded right now. You you got to stop the run first, and then you worry about Herbert and his arm. You look at um you look at what, what what's going on in Tampa Bay. Brady will tell you all the time. Look what he did to us. They ran the ball, and once they ran the ball, then you can go with play action. Wednesday morning on Bird 365 with Jody Mack and John McMullen, Joe Krause, humbly sitting in uh, the big chair for uh, Jody Mack and Tony Mack on this football uh, Wednesday. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we thank everybody, of course, uh, for tuning in to Bird 365. One thing I wanted to mention uh, um, before John McMullen uh, left this morning and um, – it escaped, and I didn't get an opportunity to reference it. Check out John McMullen's latest article posted yesterday um, in Eagles Report on Philly Mag. The evolution of Nick Sirianni took off with the Chargers. Great read uh, from John McMullen. He'll connect uh, all of the thought, uh, all of those dots as we lead into the game. Uh, on Sunday. Big B, Barrett Brooks now joining us here uh, on Birds 365. The next half hour gets a little bit easier. I just have to kind of throw the question out there and let the expert uh, lead me down the road. Barrett, thanks for jumping (laughs) on, brother. Appreciate it, man. No problem. No problem. No problem. What's going on, man? Not not too much, man. Hey, I want to touch on it. I want to touch on a tough subject uh, first, um, and, and I touch on it with the respect Um, you know, to the family of the individual um, who was killed in the Henry Ruggs uh, situation and the tragedy uh, that occurred uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, You know, you're a pro football player, Barrett. You're, you know, you're a part of an elite fraternity that very few people will ever enter. So when you see that situation, that tragedy occur, um, you look at it differently, you feel differently uh, about it. I don't know if you're comfortable sharing uh, some of those thoughts. It is a tragedy, and I know we don't know the story, but Henry Ruggs, um, for anybody who may not have saw the story, was involved in a horrible automobile accident. He's going to be charged or was charged uh, with driving under the influence Um, which led to a death of an individual. And that's what we know about the story right now. It is is indeed um, a tragedy on all all sides. Yeah, you know, I I remember back when I first, when I was in the league, you know, early in the league in my career, uh, kind of the same thing happened um, with with a player from the Rams. I think his last name was Little or... And, um, you know, it was it was basically the same instance. You know, I mean, if he he left the the, the accident, you know, it, he has he has no other he has no other right to be able to do that just as anybody else does. You know, just because you play football or, or whatever doesn't mean that you can just do what you want to do. It doesn't mean that, you know, you can't influence the same lives the same way, uh, you know, somebody else does, you know, that doesn't play football. Um, you know, you got to be there, be responsible for your actions. Um, and, 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 you know, as you go forward, man, you got to understand uh, someone's life was taken and, you know, the lives of the family members of this, of, of the victim, um, you know, they got to deal with this, you know, he's going to deal with it for the rest of his life. And, and he's going to have to, you know, pay the penalty, pay the cost for, for what happened. You know, if it did happen in an instance that he, he was the one that did it. So, I mean, this is this is a sad story, not just for um, you know, for the for the victim and the victim's family, but it's also sad for him. You know, this this could ruin his entire life. You know, this is this is something that's so serious that it goes beyond football. You know, forget talking about you know X's and O's and what he does on the field and how you know he um you know he plays the game. You know, this is a this is about somebody's life. You know, somebody's life was taken. Um, 
from from an, an automobile accident. So this this is it's not really tough for me to talk about, but it's tough for me to realize that you know somebody's life was taken because somebody was under the influence. That's I mean, to me that's tough. Barrett Brooks joining us here on Birds 365 across really the Jacob is. Media YouTube channel. No doubt about it, uh, Barrett. Well said uh, and well stated. Didn't mean to hit you with that out of the box, but your reaction is, um, you know, is real. Has Everybody's reaction has meaning. Your reaction has a little bit more meaning because you have you live in that circle, you, you know, so you look at it and think about it differently. Um, let's yeah, get into they, some... Sometimes they think that, you know, just... Even some players think just because you play in the NFL means that you have a um, you, you 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 like have a higher calling, and you know as opposed to come with um with with dealing with issues um, that are in you know, the law. But there isn't. You know, we put our pants on the same way everybody else does. You know, I mean, you, he's an individual just like the victim was an individual, and you know, just because he played football doesn't bar him from you know, any other circumstance that the regular, a regular person has to be accountable for. Good stuff. from as I said to John McMullen last night on football, 24 seven athletes are people who play games for a living. The people right. are important. The games are yep. not. Um, and we'll leave it there on the story of Henry Ruggs as that begins to play out. Barrett, I want to um, thank you for coming on birth 365. I want to talk to you about Fletcher Cox. There was a lot of, conversation yesterday there's been a lot of talk about Fletcher Cox all season but right. yesterday leading into what was the NFL trade deadline is a deal going to be made are the Raiders going to make it make a deal are they going to finally move uh Fletcher Cox and I'm sitting there <coughs> listening and watching and consuming the information and I'm saying wait a minute, this is Fletcher Cox. This is the highest paid defensive player on this football team. This is a pro bowler. This is a captain. This is a leader uh, of this defense. And we're looking to move Fletcher Cox. I just didn't understand it. Well, I mean, in all actuality, man, this team is, is in, a, in a state of, all right, are they going to rebuild? Are they going to just retool? And I think that's where we are right now. I, you know, I at the end of the day, I looked at Fletch and, you know, what he provides to this team. Okay, he hasn't had the dynamic, you know, season that we think he should have, considering the fact he is the highest paid player on the team. But, you know, when you look at what he brings to the table as far as leadership and things of that nature, you know, the a lot of those younger guys look up to him. A lot of guys are playing well because of him, because they've seen what he's done. They see what he does in practice. They see about how he – you know, goes about his business. It's a different scheme for him. And he's learning a different scheme just like everybody else is. It's going to take him a little bit to, you know, revert into what, you know, Gannon wants him to do. Um, you look at, you know, look at a guy like Hargrave. Hargrave last year was kind of in the same situation. He was learning how to be a one-gap type of player instead of being a two-gap player like he was with the Steelers. Now he's transferred into being a guy that's jumped the gap, and now he's a guy that can play well in this um, <clears throat> defense. Fletch is trying to learn how he fits in his defense and how he uses his explosiveness as a player. And once he does get it, you know, he's going to be the same guy that he was. But as far as him getting traded, I, I mean, I, I couldn't see him getting traded because it's too much of a dead cap hit if he did. If he get traded, it'd be over $30 million that would be left on the books, you know, even after he leaves. And we, I don't think they want to go through the same situation they just went through with, um, with um, you know, Carson. So, you know, I, I kind of thought he was going to be here anyways. Plus, he's still a good player, regardless of what you see in the first eight games. You know, once he wants to turn it on, and I, I hope that's the case, that he wants to turn – he hasn't turned it on yet. He's a definite force in the middle of that defense. Once he gets, uh, you know, the just on how to play within the scheme work of that defense. You can't just be what you want to be and play how you want to play. Uh, if, if, if you're in a um, system, you know, every cog has its place in, in that machine. So he has to play within what he has to do for that position, that three technique or that one technique. Once he gets it, I think he'll be a dominant player again. Everybody's like, oh, he lost it. Well, even though he's lost something, he's still better than, you know, three quarters of the defensive linemen in the league right now. He's still that dynamic of a player. He could change how, you know, how he's playing right now once he puts his mind to it. Now everybody's like, well, you know, he should put his mind to it. Well, I mean, 
He should, but at the, at the end of the day, he's going to use this as fuel going forward. Um, uh, as far as you know, how he's been playing, simply because he feels disrespected now. You know, he feels as though, all right, you want to treat me like that? You're going to see a different Fletcher Cox from this point forward. He's you know not going to be. He's not going to be mad about. It. He's going to be okay. Then I'm gonna, I'm going to play pissed off now, and 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 give you what you come to see. So when it when his you know talents is available in the free agent market or in the trade market. He's going to demand a lot more than what uh, he's, he uh, demanded right now. You know what, Barrett? I have quoted you many, many times uh, since the start of the season, specifically regarding veteran players and how veteran players react or connect with a new coaching staff and, and, and the quote that I've said many times and maybe call it a paraphrase perhaps, but is in your opinion or in your mind, a veteran player will buy in or follow a coach or a staff. If they can make the veteran player better, I can go back to, you know, the draft special and and find a, an audio clip or a video clip of you stating that. And that appears to be so true in this situation. I don't know whether or not Fletcher has accepted Jonathan Gannon's system to be one that's going to make Fletcher Cox a better player. Absolutely. You mean you hit it right on the head with that. You know, there's two things that you have to do. You have to keep it 100 with a player. And number two, you got to show a player you can make them better. And at this point, I don't think that they have shown Cox that he's been put, they're putting him in the best position to really highlight what he does as a player, put him in a winning position. Now this last game against, um, against Detroit, um, I think it was the defense was called more aggressively. So it did feature guys, you know, to get up the field and and play at a higher level because, I mean, you know, they knew they were just going to pass the ball. So it wasn't though they had to keep their gap disciplined because they had to pass the ball because they got down so late. So when they, I mean, uh, got down so early. So once Gannon knew that they had to pass the ball, now he can unleash the hounds. He could tell those guys, go, hey, just go pass rush. You know, don't worry about the run. You know, tackle the run on your way to the quarterback. You know, and in that instance, that's exactly what Fletcher Cox, that's exactly what Williams, that's exactly, <clears throat> excuse me, guys like Sweat can do. They can jump in a gap, go, and not worry about being gap disciplined because they're going and rushing the passer. Now, when they get with a balanced team and they're playing with a balanced team and, 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 and you know, they're, you know, the beginning of the game or the score is really tight, they then have to revert back to the defense that they ran before, which they had to stay gap disciplined because they could run the ball. And the threat of running the ball uh, puts them in a position where they have to stay where they're when you're in that gap and you have to fill. Now, another thing, you know, what's going to help Fletcher out is if these linebackers play like they played last week. And the difference being that the style of play from those linebackers, they were filling their gaps, but that was TJ Edwards and TJ Edwards. That's what he does. He, he he's, he's a traditional linebacker. He's not one of those guys want to go out there and pass um, uh, pass defense and all that. He wants to come downhill and hit you in the mouth. So that style fits the defense that, you know, Gannon wants to run, so that's why he started. He comes downhill, he fills his gap, and that makes it better for the defensive lineman because now you can't double team because he's filling his gap. That offensive guard or offensive tackle has to come off or center has to come off on him because he's in the gap and it and it, and it kind of messes up the blocking scheme. And that's why they had so much success in the early part of the game, really, you know, stopping that offense. You know, he played with gap discipline. Once, you know, once you know Davion Taylor saw what he was doing. He started doing the same thing. He started filling his gap, and it made the defense work. So if you don't have all the same cogs, you know, doing the same thing in this machine, it's not going to work. You know, you're going to get caught, and, and and big plays are going to be on you if you don't play within the framework of the defense. But, hey, I, I, I have to admit, Fletcher Cox is a one-gap player that wants to get up and create havoc. This defense isn't that type of defense um, if they're not passing the ball. So, you know, he just has to figure out how he can – become a better player within this defense as opposed to the defense being catered around him because it just looks like, you know, Gannon's going to keep doing what he's been doing.
And he may revert back to that this week when um, Justin Herbert and the Chargers uh, come into the link on Sunday. One last thing on that, uh, Barrett. Um, and again, I go back in time just to uh, the preseason and training camp uh, leading into the start of the season. And when it was all finally over and training camp was done, it appeared to me that the strongest part of this football team was the front four of the defense. That's what Absolutely. that's what appeared to be coming coming out of camp. Uh, go and, and then of course the big uglies, the offensive line. The, those were the two. Uh, I don't know. Call them foundational the pieces team. for your for your twenty twenty one season. Absolutely. That's where that's where that's where this team has their best players in the trenches. And, you know, once you get back to making sure you can highlight them, you know, you become a better team. <clears throat> Excuse me. You become a better team. Offensively, if you look at what they're going to do best, you have big road grading offensive linemen. Hell, your left tackle is six foot eight, 385 pounds. Your left guard, six foot six, 360 pounds. Then you have Kelsey. Then you look on the other side. You got now you have Nate Herbig. Six foot four, six foot five, 340, 350 pounds. Why not use their strength? Their strength is their big, big bodied guys. They like to come off the ball, hit guys in the mouth, and run block. They're better at run blocking than anything else. So give them an opportunity to do that. I mean, I can see you can pass. You know, you're going to have to pass sometimes. But, you know, if you can afford to run the ball and run the ball successfully, there are a few teams that are built. And they are big enough to stop them from, from getting double teamed and getting road grade. You know, you got to put your guys in a better position. And, and this is offensive line is a better run blocking offensive line than pass blocking. They can and they do have the ability to, but why put them in that bad position? You know, if you look at the, the Raiders game, they left their tackles out there, you know, high and dry. You know, if you'd have ran the ball a little bit and let those guys lean on those smaller defensive ends, now the laws of faces go in your favor. You know, you got an immovable object, you know, going up and blasting a guy, you know, that's smaller than he is, run blocking him. After a while, it takes a toll. And if you look at the Detroit game in the second half, it took a toll on that defense because there's nothing they could do to stop it. And that demoralizes the defense when you can't stop the run. They know what's coming. They can't stop it. You know, it just puts you in a better position. It gets your mindset of your offensive line like, all right, we're dominators. We can do what we want to do. We can call what we want to call. We can come off the ball and hit you in the mouth. You want to get them to have that type of psyche. You know, the, all right, coach, I know we're going to run the ball. That's why you heard guys coming to the sideline. Coach, we got them going. They're running now. Let's let's continue to run the ball, and we can have some success. And once they did that, the game just fell apart. You know, I mean, Detroit didn't have anything else. There's nothing they could combat it. And, it, you know, it, and that's why you got the results that you got, because you allowed that offensive line to play within what they want to do as opposed to, you know, having the defense dictate. And that's one thing about this this coaching staff that I don't like. I don't like that they 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 allow the defense to dictate or the opponent to dictate what they're doing as opposed to they set the, the precedence and they dictate the tempo. You know, that's the difference between, you know, Belichick and, you know, guys like that. They dictate what they want to do. If they got a better running team, they're going to run the ball regardless of what, what the circumstances are. Big Red, he wants to pass the ball. He understands that, you know, running the ball, he has more success, but he when to gets the ball in his playmaker's hands. And that's what you have to do. Your best player at the time before um, Miles Sanders got out of, you know, and, and was put on IR, he was, you know, a great running back. We never used, we never showcased his talents, which, you know, was mind-blowing to me. You know, he's the one of the better weapons you have on the, on the field. If it had got him going, we'd have a mm -hmm. different uh, record right now. But we didn't, you know, we didn't highlight what we do best, and that's running the balls. Whether they want to admit it or not, that's what this run, this um, offensive line is—a run blocking offensive line. Well, the fault of that definitely falls on the doorstep of Nick Sirianni, right? He's, he's calling, calling the plays. Play. Yep, he's calling. He, he's calling the plays, uh, and I agree. And I know John McMullen will argue that the modern NFL requires uh, you to throw the football. And when you face a Tom Brady or uh, you face um, 
uh, even Justin Herbert, who's a gunslinger. Uh, if you can't play from the lead and you have to play catch up, you have to abandon the run. And, and, and I don't necessarily agree with moving away from your strength. I, uh, you know, well, again, yeah. if, that, if that's your strength, stay with your strength, Be, get creative Grazie. with the other pieces, but stay with your strength. Crosby, but see, that's, that's, that's where the problem lies. You know, you look at the guys you just talked about, you look Herbert, when you talk about Herbert, um, Eckler, is the is is the cog that makes that machine roll? You know his ability to run between the tackles, his ability to go out there and catch on third downs is why that offense is running as smooth as it is. Defensive coordinators are trying to stop the run, stop him from being highlighted, and that's how you stop that offense. If you can stop Eckler from being a, a dynamic running back, then that offense is pretty predictable because they're going to try to go to two guys. So you know if you 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 got to stop the run first, and then you worry about Herbert and his arm. You look at um, you look at what, what what's going on in Tampa Bay. Brady will tell you all the time. Look what he did to us. They ran the ball, and once they ran the ball, then you can go with play action. Yes, you have the best quarterback in the league, but their offense runs from the running game. You know, then it goes to the passing game because you can't you can't ask offensive linemen to 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 pass block 50, 60 times a game and not think that you don't have sacks and he's going to be beat up and he's going to get hit. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't want to get hit, so he wants to establish the run first. That way he can push the ball down the field to his big play threats. This, you know, that's the, that's the dirty little secret in the league that nobody wants to talk about. The teams that are good are the teams that run the ball all consistently. All of them run the ball consistently. That's why Kansas City is having such a hard time with the offense. They're not running the ball. Once uh, what's Ed, Edwards Alaire, once he left out the team, teams don't respect the run anymore. Now there's pinning their ears back and rushing the passer. That's why the the um pay, the um you know you have your you know your one of the best quarterbacks in the league having all these you know interceptions and, and the offense is, is stuttering simply because they don't have a running game to fall back on. You got to have a running game. You have to. It's a must in this league. Say what you want to say to try to act like it's not. Look at the Cardinals. They have to run the ball to set up the pass. That's what it's about, man. If you can run the ball. That's going to give you success on the offensive side of the ball because you don't want to be one dimensional because defensive coordinators can stop one dimensional teams. When you have to make them play the run and the pass, that's when you have success against the best defenses. Even in the modern NFL, yep, old school football, there's a place for old school football, Barry. That to. should that should never leave or can never leave this game. Yeah, look at Wilson. Wilson, he'll be brought back within the next two weeks, you know, either this week or next week. Uh, they took the screw out of his, his hand. But um, he had the most success when he had Carson, when he when he could when he could run the ball with his running backs. You know, that's when he had success. You can't go with an offense that's going to pass all the time. The air carry all days are, are over. You can't do it. I mean, it just doesn't happen. You have to have a, a, a steady running game to give you a steady dose of the run in order to be successful. And that's what it is. You know, it, if you look at all the best teams right now with the best records, look at even Dallas. Dallas can run the ball, which opens up the pass. I mean, it's, like I said, it's the dirty little secret in the league. You know, nobody wants to talk about, but running the ball is where you get your success from. No doubt about it. Take 15 pounds off of Zeke Elliott. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, he, and he looks a hell of a lot faster than he yes. did uh, than he did uh, did a year ago. By the way, and Tony Pollard, one two punch, uh, and you're right, spot on! Exclamation point uh, on your reference uh, to it. Uh, don't forget Barrett Brooks coming up 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. <clears throat> right here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. Get caught in the middle with Aton Chander, Barrett Brooks, uh, and Harry Mays Monday through Friday. 11 a.m. Uh, to 1 p.m. Last thing for Barrett Brooks before um, we let you go, and we thank you, Barrett, for jumping on Birds 365 Appreciate uh, this morning. Um, there is talk amongst the fan base that we're going to make the playoffs. We got a shot <laughs> to make the playoffs. Now, I don't know if we really want to make the playoffs, meaning right. when I say we, I mean the fan base, but let's face it. Everybody knew coming into this season that the tougher lift 
was really going to be in that first six games, that first six or seven games. And then the backside of the schedule, which is playing out uh, with the Washington football team, with the Giants being so bad, the Jets on the schedule, there's enough W's, potential W's on the backside of the schedule to say, hey, just maybe we put a little bit of a run together. Now, you got to get past the Chargers, uh, and the Saints are looming out there as well. Um, but other than that, what's your thoughts? Do we have a legitimate chance to get into the playoffs? And does, Jeff, uh, and does Howie Roseman want us to get into the playoffs? Well, of course, Howie wants us to get into the playoffs because he wants to say, look, look, this is the roster I put together. I told you so. Mm -hmm. You know, I told you I knew what I was doing. You know, so that's like a double-edged sword when it comes to, to, to Howie because, number one, you know, he wants to say, I told you so, because that's a the roster he put together. But it's also, well, I don't know if I really want to win because, you know, right now we're still in the top 10 as far as um, draft picks. You know, we're still in that top 10 players, you know. So it's like, um, you know, we're, we're I think we're 11 right now. And, uh, you know, I mean, a top 10 pick is a lot better than, a, you know, make it to the playoffs and only have a top, you know, 15 or 17, you know, pick. So, you know, if you look at it that way, it's a double-edged sword. But in all actuality, the way the NFL is and the parity that's going on in the NFL with free agency and ability, you know, to trade, you know, there's a lot more they traded back when I was playing. It gives you an opportunity. It gives you a shot. And our division is just so bad. And not just, you know, not just, you know, the, the players within the division, but, you know, at the NFC period that everybody kind of, you know, you have your elite team. They're going to win a lot of games. But then after that, it's kind of even, you know, everybody's records around the same way. You know, one or two losses separate, you know, everybody in the NFL. So you do have a, a shot. You have an opportunity. And this is a learning process for this coaching staff, learning process for these players. They're learning this coach. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, he talks, you know, he, he's not the best guy as far as, you know, motivation you know, in talking to us as the as the media. But what he's doing in that locker room is, is working. Those guys are still believing in what he does. Players are still playing for him, as you know, as you see, you know, with the win against Detroit and, you know, what guys like Kelsey are saying. They still have an opportunity, a legit opportunity. They just lost to the teams that they were supposed to lose to, you know, in a nutshell. They lost them in pretty bad fashion, and the style points weren't there in, in the losses to these teams. But they lost the teams they should have lost to that we thought they were going to lose to. Now we're going to the you know area of the schedule where these are the teams we should win, and they beat the teams they should win, and they and, you know and and as they go forward, they should beat these teams that they you know that they're predicting to win. You know they're a lot they have a lot better roster than a lot of these teams. You know that they, they have a better quarterback than Daniel Jones. You know so you know I think they have a better team than than the Giants, especially with all the injuries they have. So they should beat them twice. You look at the Washington football team; they have a better quarterback than their quarterback there. I mean, he's playing, you know, at a higher level. So, yes, you know, we should beat those guys twice. Dallas will be a problem. Um, you know, Herbert, you know, he, he in, the, in the Chargers, they're a good team. But I think they're a very beatable team. And if mm -hmm. they come in with the same mindset that they did before, they have a legit opportunity. This is all about the opportunity to go out there and play these games, man. And, and, and you know, it's a lot of football left. And I think that's the mindset this team is having. It's a lot of football left. We have a lot of improvement to do. But, hey, we're not bad as people think we are. Baron, I'll leave you with this. John McMullen said 15 or 20 minutes ago, whenever it was, check the tape, as they say. If Aaron, <laughs> Rodgers, if Aaron Rodgers was on this football team as the starting quarterback, right now the Eagles are 7-1 and one and a Super Bowl contender. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's it in a nutshell. You know, we're they're 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 actually a player away, but you also got to look at this man. It's, you know, it's, it's it's the same thing. Make mm -hmm. you laugh, also can make you cry. Yeah. You know, do you want to be? Do you want to? You know, really go ahead and and and, and handicap yourself by going out and getting a, a guy and you can't sign anybody else. That's you know that's that's the nature of you know being in the NFL. You get your get your your your, your starting quarterback, your franchise quarterback. You got to pay him, which means you got to you know lessen other places in this team, you know, in, 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 the, in the capacity of, all right, you won't get as good of players there, but Hey, if you got a player like that, he can make you a great team, you know? So, I mean, it's, they have a lot of work to do, but Hey, they're right where they need to be right now. They can get it done. 
And if they, you know, go about things the right way and running the ball and uh, this defense starts stopping a the run, they very they they could very well make it into the playoffs. They really could. Good stuff from Barrett Brooks here on Birds 365. Again, get caught in the middle with Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays coming up here on the Jacob Media YouTube channel, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and friday good stuff barrett brooks thank you brother for jumping on man appreciate you all right guy uh good stuff from double b barrett brooks joining us here on birds 365 we roll on here on the jacob media youtube channel we'll stop for a commercial break on the other uh side of the break mark farzetta will join us and then a little bit later on d gun and rob ellis back in a moment 